Doug Campbell, and we are doing our reports on Mount St. Helens. On May 18, 1980, the eruption of Mount St. Helens in the southwest Washington state disrupted the lives of thousands and changed more than 200 square miles of rich forest into gray, lifeless landscape. Now, more than 26 years later, the land around the mountain is slowly healing. Nature may be covering the scars of the 1980 eruption, but many people will never forget what happened that spring day. Mount St. Helens, an active stratovolcano or composite volcano, is located in southwest Washington State, USA. Approximately a three-hour drive south from Seattle, Washington, 90 miles away, and a two-and-a-half-hour drive north from Portland, Oregon, 65 miles away. May 18, 1980, at 8.32 a.m., eruption was, the eruption was triggered by a 5.1 magnitude earthquake centered beneath the mountain. Mount St. Helens was 9,677 feet before the eruption and 8,363 feet after. 1,314 feet was removed by the May 18th eruption. The largest landslide in recorded history swept down the mountain at speeds of 70 to 150 miles per hour and buried the North Fork of the Total River under an average of 150 feet of debris. Some areas are covered by as much as 600 feet. In all, approximately 23 square miles of material was removed from the mountain. The lateral blast swept out of the north side of Mount St. Helens at 300 miles per hour, creating a 230 square mile fan-shaped area of devastation reaching a distance of 17 miles. From the crater, with temperatures as high as 660 degrees Fahrenheit and the power of 24 megatons of thermal energy. It snags a hundred year old trees like toothpicks and strip them of their bark. The snow on Mount St. Helens that was not instantly flashed to steam by the heat melted and formed large mud flows that destroyed 27 bridges, 200 homes, 185 miles of roadway and 15 miles of railway. Pyrocastic flows rolled out of the crater for hours after the eruption, covering six square miles. They sterilized the remaining soil with temperatures nearing 1,300 degrees Fahrenheit. The massive ash cloud grew to 80,000 feet, or 18 kilometers, in 15 minutes and reached the east coast in three days. Although most of the ash fell within 300 miles of the mountain, finer ash circled the earth in 15 days and may continue to stay in the atmosphere for many years. 57 people were killed as a result of the eruption. Of these, 21 bodies were never recovered from the blast zone. The old lava dome rises 876 feet above the crater floor and is about 3,500 feet in, the, in diameter. There have been no dome building eruptions on this dome since October 1986. If the dome were to reestablish the growth pattern it had in the 1980s, it would take 200 years to rebuild Mount St. Helens to its pre-1980 size. The new lava dome as of 2-1-05 rises 13, 1,363 feet above the 1980 crater floor and is approximately 1,500 feet long and 500 feet wide. It has been nicknamed the Whaleback because of its distinctive shape. 1.1 billion dollars for timber, silverworks, and agricultural losses. 
This does not include money for personal property losses, the cost of, the cost of ash cleanup, or the loss of tourism in the area immediately after the eruption. And this is the damage es estimates. 7,000 big game animals, 12 million Chinook and Go Go salmon, and millions of birds and small mammals are believed to have died in the eruption. Here are some of the benefits. Volcanoes provide us with geothermal energy, valuable minerals, fertile soil, and recreational opportunities. Mount St. Helens can't even twitch without scientists knowing about it. Mount St. Helens is expected to continue erupting, but no one knows for how long. Pyroclastic flows, lahars, ejection of ash and pumice, and even the possibility of lava flows may all lie somewhere in Mount St. Helens' future. Now we will show you the eruption. At 8.32 a.m. on Sunday, May 18, 1980, an earthquake initiated the greatest landslide in recorded history. Mount St. Helens erupted with an explosion heard 700 miles away. Part of the mountain was blasted into the sky. Gigantic clouds of ash towered 16 miles above the mountain. The summit 1,300 feet of Mount St. Helens was gone. Okay, for the last two weekends, Sparky and I built a paper mache and chicken wire model of Mount St. Helens, and the toothpicks represent the downed trees from the 1980 eruption, and now we will duplicate that eruption on our model. And the eruption of Mount St. Helens. Yeah, short love of flow, but it works! This now concludes our project of Mount St. Helens. <laughs> over here. Over here. Over here. Over here. And this concludes the project. It's still erupting.